Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a quick look at the multi-output facilities of VST instruments. So this is something which is really useful for a number of instruments but something which may not be something you've used, might be something you've thought oh I wonder if I could do something like that. So we're going to just take a quick look through what you can do with them. So first things first, a little bit of history, the very first kind of VST instruments lived in what I sometimes call the rack, uh, which is now the VST instruments list or window here. However, later on there were then instrument tracks which combined the instrument with the MIDI, which made for much easier editing and particularly automation made everything much simpler, but they had a limitation and that limitation was they only had a single stereo out. That's no longer the case, so we can actually have multiple outputs on one of them, whereas it used to be only rack instruments which had that. So we're going to look at how multiple outputs can be useful and how you can use them. First things first, let's start off with an instrument track. So we're just going to add an instrument track here, right clicking on the track list. Let's pick Halion Sonic and just going to put just a grand piano, standard, GM1. Oh, in fact, let's just go with that. Right, so there we have standard acoustic grand piano. Now, with most instruments, that may be all you want. It's just a single uh, stereo output. But with a lot of instruments, there are times when you may not want that. So, for instance, in the case of Halion Sonic, it's multi timbral It can play 16 different sounds. With things like Contact, you can have multiple uh, different synths within it. It's like a synth engine. So, often you will want different audio processing on them. And while they give you some degree of it, so you've got effects, etc., on Halion Sonic and on other things, contact included. Sometimes you want to be able to mix them separately, apply effects within Cubase, etc. So to do that, there's a few things we need to do. So first things first, we need to turn some outputs on. Now there's a few different places you can do that, but the main one that I use is here where it says activate output. So I'm just going to click there and we get a list of all the possible outputs. They're all stereo and we've got 16 of them, which makes sense as it's 16 part multi timbral. So I'm just going to turn on an extra one here. Now we haven't seen any changes here because we're not looking at the outputs, but we can see them. If we had the mixer open, we can see now HSSE out two has appeared. And if we click the automation button here, we can see that those outputs now appear and they're ready to be automated. So that's quite useful. So let's just put in a little bit of MIDI here. Um, nothing particularly interesting. So say so nothing particularly interesting there, but just something for us to be getting on with. And when we play this, we can see it's coming out of this output here. But we can send it, if we want to, we can send it out of a different output. There won't be much point to that at the moment, but you'll see why you can use that in a second. So if we go back to our Halion Sonic, we can change the output in the mix page in Halion Sonic. In other synths, it will be in a different area. Uh, you can click here and we can pick output two. So if we rooted our part one, the piano, to output two, when we play it here, we should see, you can see there it's coming out of output two. Now, at the moment, there's not really much point to that because we've only got one sound. So we've, we've only got that one thing. So there's, there's not really any reason for that. And the reason why we can do that will become apparent in just a second. So I'm going to put it back to output one, the main output, to avoid some confusion. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a second sound. Let's just pick up fairly straightforward acoustic bass sound. So that's that there. And then I'm going to send that out of output two. Okay. 
Now we need to be able to access that and we can access that by adding a MIDI track here and we'll just call that bass and now we need to pick where it's been sent to. Now Keybase has jumped the gun here. We want it sent to our Halion Sonic 01, so 01 Halion Sonic SE MIDI and we need to send it to channel 2, the reason being that these are the channels here. So if we want to access that bass sound we send it to channel 2 and now we can see not only have I got a bass out of there but it's coming out of output 2. So if we want to put some particular processing on there, let's let's just put a let's break the prime directive and just put a reverb on there because then you will see it and hear it really clearly what's happening. So here's a big reverb on our bass. So you can hear that the reverb's been applied to the bass because that's coming out of output two. But on our output one piano, you can hear no reverb. So while that's a fairly facile example, it does show you that you can use all 16 of these different uh, parts which are available in here. Each one of them can have its own output if you turn them on. I'll show you the other place to turn those on in a second. And then you can process each one individually. So you can mix it just like you would uh, if you were mixing in a conventional studio. So the other place you can do it is if you hit F11, we see the rack, and then the output button is here. Let's just turn all outputs on. Nice and easy, you see straight away all of those appear there. Let's close the bottom section so you can see. So there's all 16 outputs, and they would then all appear in the mixer. So there's all 16 outputs for us to play with. You can process them separately. Also, you can name them, which is really useful. Okay, so if you got a particular one you want to use so let's just call that base base out there then that makes life a bit easier now the last thing we need to do is to tell Cubase which audio channel we are using it has no way of looking inside and working out that the base is coming out of output 2 or base out as it's now known so what we need to do is tell it and that's done in the inspector here so it knows we're sending it to the Halion, but it doesn't know which output it's coming out of. So if we click here, we can pick which one. We've named it base out, so that makes sense. So now when we click the E, you can see straight away it's got the insert on there, but when we click the E, we get the audio channel, which is appropriate for the one we're actually using. So let's just look at that again. So let's set up a third one. So let's open up Halion Sonic. Ooh. let's just put a glockenspiel up, something that will sound quite different. We're going to send that out of output 3, so we just click output 3, and now we need to make a MIDI track which is going to feed to it. So we're going to do that, right click here, add MIDI track, we'll call it glock, as it is there, and now we need to set it onto the right MIDI channel because at the moment it's being sent to the bass one which is not what we want. So there's two things we need to do. Firstly, we need to set it to the right channel, which is channel three, because our glockenspiel is on channel three. So just gonna change that to channel three. And now the glock will play. Good morning, campers. And the last thing we need to do is to tell the inspector which output we're using. So then when we press the E button, we get the appropriate uh, channel up. So again, we click on here and we'll pick HSS out 3, which we can rename. So let's call that Glock out. And then when we go back to our Glock channel, it knows Glock out is what we want. And then if we want to put anything on there, let's just put stereo delay on there again so you see clearly. So our piano still has nothing on it but if we click on our glock and play that we'll hear there's the delay okay so that's how to use multiple outputs on a vst instrument